Hi, and thanks for watching the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith. I'm your announcer, Jason Connors. The broadcast is recorded every Sunday morning at the Mark's First United Pentecostal Church, located on Academy Drive in Mark's, Mississippi. You can join the church for services every Sunday and Wednesday, or you can view past services at www.freegospelradio.com. This broadcast is made possible by the generosity of its viewers. You can help keep the broadcast going by sending your donation to Pastor Harold Smith, P.O. Box 373, Marks, Mississippi, 38646. Help us spread the word by mailing in your donation. And now, the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith.
to you for a little while. Do you know we've had three grown people receive the Holy Ghost in the last few months? Isn't that wonderful? Let's give Jesus a hand of praise. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning on the valley of hope. The valley of hope. How many of you have ever walked through a valley? Let me see your hands. And uh, a valley is a deep hollow. Uh, it's a deep hollow between two mountains. And uh, when you're not on the mountain, you're in the valley. And uh, I want to preach on that valley, that deep holler but whoo, when you're walking through it you don't have to fear everything around you because you know in the valley where the where the water is and where the lakes and the springs and the green grass and everything that's where you find the vicious animals you find the wild animals but uh, I declare to you today, you do not have to fear when you're walking through the valley. <laughs> because you're going through, if you live for God, you're going through a valley of hope. Hallelujah. I, I enjoyed studying this message. Uh, notice here now, hope is one of the three main elements of Christian character. Hope is one of the main elements of Christian character. Faith, hope, and charity. All right. Hope is an essential. Everybody say essential. Hope is an essential element of a Christian life. And the glory of our Christian life is centered on hope. Thank God. The Bible said, if in this life only we have hope. We, if this is all we've got, if this is all we've got to hope for, it's a better job next week. Uh, 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 the kids will get well. Or, or uh, more money in the bank. Or a better car. If that's all that we've got to hope for, the scripture said that we are among men most miserable. Yes. Let's okay. praise Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is our hope. Yes, sir. Jesus is our hope. Yes, he is. And he is a living hope. Uh, Paul said it so well in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the 12th verse, he said, For now we see in part. Uh, we just looking, we just looking through a glass darkly now. Uh, we don't see. We don't see everything as it is. Hallelujah. We see through a glass darkly. But then he said, someday, thank God, we're going to see face to face. Hallelujah. It won't be darkly anymore. And Paul said, now I know in part, but then I shall be known even. I shall know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Hallelujah. Paul said in the fifth chapter of Romans, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice. Everybody say we rejoice. Hallelujah. I wish I could get some of you to rejoice this morning. Amen. I forgot some of y'all are riding. It's hard to shout when you're riding, but uh, I want to tell you, we rejoice, Paul said. Amen. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Rosina Lamoco, she taught on Mahanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel God talking to some people this morning. Thank God. You know, God's trying to stir up our pure mind. God's trying to get us to open up our heart where He can feed us on some manna that comes from heaven from the Word of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn with me this morning. Oh, I have been having a time with this this week. I, I mean, I have just, I have chewed on it and chewed on it. Amen. Till it's good and tender and I'm going to let you have it this morning. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. 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 In the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter and the 17th through the 19th verse. If you'll notice here. God said about the fall of Jericho when God gave Jericho to the children of Israel as they were coming out of bondage in Egypt. And uh, he, said, he said about Jericho, he said, Now when it falls, he said, The city shall be accursed. Everybody say accursed. accursed. Hallelujah. You know what that meant? That meant that God didn't want them to touch it. Didn't want them to mess with it. He said, it shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab, Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers. You remember back when the spies went out? Rahab the harlot hid those spies, and, and God rewarded her by letting her live when God destroyed the city of Jericho. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, but he said, notice here in the 18th verse, he said, but you, all of you, I want you to know, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed. And you know, if we could just look at the word of God, the Bible said, in our day, he said, come ye out from among them. And be ye separate, thus saith the Lord, and I will receive you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In our day, he said, love not the world. It's accursed. It's accursed. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Oh, yes. That's it. What is it. You're in the book, brother. Come on. Oh, I like that. Say that again, brother Jones. You're in the book, brother. Woo. Thank God for the book. God's word is truth. Hallelujah. He said, "Keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed." And and I'm gonna tell you something, brother. We're living in a world of a whole bunch of worldly apostolics. That's it, amen. Anything goes. That's it. Some of them wear their dresses so low cut. You can just see to the Gulf of Mexico almost. And uh, they just, uh, I mean, they don't care anymore. I said they don't care anymore. Uh, I see pictures a lot of time. You know, nowadays, and uh, you know, if you ever been to a zoo, I hope I ain't hitting none of y'all this morning, but uh, have you ever been to a zoo? And, and go to the monkey cage. You know what they do? A lot of time. They just sit there and grin and stick out their tongue at you. And I've noticed in Facebook. How many people. You see with their mouth open. And their tongue hanging out like a luby lizard. And uh, you know I, I wonder why they got their tongue hanging out like that. Ooh. I'll pick this up after a while, maybe. Okay. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, God said to Joshua, He said, Tell them, leave the, leave the cursed alone, lest you become a curse. That's it. And lest you make the camp of Israel a curse. Now, notice this word and trouble, and trouble it. it. Woo! Oh, 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 oh. He said, you're going to trouble it if you do. And uh, so we understand that. So then we go to the next chapter in the seventh chapter of Joshua. And the Bible said here, 
but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Cormai, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. He took it and brought it into his house. You know, God doesn't want us to pick up all of the trash of the world and bring it into our house. That's it, amen. Right, brother. Yeah. Amen. Woo! Some of y'all are going to get with me here in a little bit. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, glad this radio audience can't hear how quiet y'all are right now. Amen. But there, there's some of the things that God doesn't want us. I look and see young ladies uh, that are 14, 15, 13 years old and uh, got tattoos all over their body. Young men got tattoos all over their body. Hallelujah to God. They got earrings in their ears. They got them in their nose. They got them in their tongue, in their lips. Uh, you know what that tells me? That somewhere along the line, they have gathered the uh, thing that God said was accursed uh, and they brought it into their lives uh, and now they're accursed from God. So the Bible said this became the valley of trouble. Everybody shout the valley of trouble. Oh, they'll know y'all are still here with me. Thank God. The valley of trouble. And, and many people today, Brother Randy, are walking through the valley of trouble. And they're troubled on every hand. The Bible says we're troubled on every hand. They're walking through the valley of trouble. Oh, hallelujah. And, and the Bible said that God took Achan. Joshua took Achan and his family, his sons, his daughters, everything he had, his animals, and took them out and said, Why have you troubled Israel? And now... God is going to trouble you. And they stone them to death uh, and burn them with fire. Hallelujah to God. Oh, and that became known as the valley of trouble. But I'd like to declare to you today, amen, just because you're walking through the valley of trouble doesn't mean that you have to stay in the valley of trouble. You can change your circumstances. Oh, I feel Him moving here this morning. I said, I feel God moving in this building. Hallelujah. Amen. And the valley of Achor. Everybody say, the valley of Achor. The valley of Achor. Became known as the valley of trouble. Hallelujah. Okay, but now listen. Thank God. God's anger. Amen. Doesn't have to stay always. Amen. God is... Uh, God is wanting people to turn to Him. He's wanting to forgive. He's wanting to forget. He's wanting, hallelujah, thank God. You know, that's the wonderful thing about God. He forgives and forgets. Some people forgive, but they don't ever forget. Come on, that's it, amen. Hallelujah. But if we go over to Hosea, the second chapter, amen, notice what God said about the valley of Achor, the valley of trouble. Oh, I like this. He said, I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achor. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! For a door of hope. Hallelujah. Thank God. I'm thankful for the valley of hope today. When the devil says there's no use, God says there's hope. Amen. Let's pray. One more river to cross. One more mountain to climb. One more valley that I gotta go through. And I'm leaving my trouble behind. One more battle with the devil. I know he'll understand. Cause I'm going through Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, it's for hell. Oh, it's for real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we turn over to Isaiah. 
to the 65th chapter and the 10th verse. And notice what he said again. And Sharon. Everybody say Sharon. Sharon. The rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. And he said, And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks and the valley of Achor. Woo! Notice that now. The valley of Achor. Hallelujah. For the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in. You know why? Because he said, My people have sought me. Thank God. The Bible said, Seek him that turns the shadow of death into the morning light. Hallelujah. I want to I want to tell you again what David said in the 23rd Psalm. He said, it doesn't matter. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I don't have to worry because God is going to turn it in to a valley of hope. Hallelujah. Oh, i got to give you something else real quick here. Give me a little tootity too there. Oh. I got to get ahead of myself here. Just, I know I won't get all this in, but uh, I want you to turn with me to First Samuel 17. Oh, this got a hold for me. Oh, I tell you, the Holy Ghost is so strong in this building. The devil said, you're not going to be able to preach that this morning. Said, uh, people are not going to respond to that. And you're just not going to be able to preach it. But hey, I feel response here this morning. I feel, I feel some response here. Thank God. Everybody's responding to this. Just stand up and say, hallelujah. Preach it. And the second verse, he said, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched, here we are in the valley, in the valley of Elah. Everybody say Elah. Elah. In the valley of Elah. Elah. And they set the battle in array against the Philistines. And there went out a champion of the Philistines, and his name was Goliath. And his height was six cubits and a span. And uh, uh, I want you to get a picture of this today. Oh, listen. If this don't make you shout, there's something wrong with your shouter. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. And I want, to, I want you to get a picture of this. And uh, here was Goliath about nine or ten foot tall. And with his armor and his spear. And he'd come out and, and, and holler. And it's a challenge. And the Bible said that the soldiers and Saul was afraid of him. That's it. Amen. Yes, sir. Woo. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Brother, the boogeyman can seem bad sometimes. You have to stand for the truth. Do you hear what I'm saying? You just have to stand for the truth. Thank God and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Hallelujah. I said he's Lord of all. And I don't care what you're going through. God will turn it into a valley of hope. And Saul and his men. Woo. <laughs> Saul and his men were afraid. That's it. Come on. Yes, sir. Here comes David. Oh, little David, play on your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here come David. Right in the middle of everything. What's going on, boys? And oh, his brother said, why don't you get back home with the sheep? Yeah. And David said, in their cause, he went to Saul and he said, I'll go fight that thing. Come on, baby. And Saul, Saul was so backslid. Woo! I don't see no hot shot. Saul was so backslid until all he could see was the corner. Oh, oh. See the blood when I see the 
going through the valley of financial trouble. You may be going through a valley of loneliness. You may be going through a valley of hurt, pain. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it doesn't matter. I said it doesn't matter. Here was a, a hurricane, I suppose. And the Bible said, When neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, notice what he said. All hope, all hope. Have you ever looked up and thought, all hope is gone. I don't know what I'm going to do. All hope is gone. And the Bible said, all hope. All hope was taken away. But in that valley of despair, when the waves were tossing, they were so high it looked like it was going to swamp the ship in it. There they stood in the valley of despair. the storm there stood an apostolic man by the name of Paul he stood there and he said there stood by me this night an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve and he told me that it's not despair but hope and Paul said God's going to give us every man on board the ship. Amen. Because we're not in the valley of despair. But we're in the valley of hope. Would you stay? And everybody that gets in the ship. That's where your hope is. Is it the ship? that blind man in Jericho. He began to cry out, Oh, oh, Master, Master. They tried to get him to hold his peace. But he cried to the Lord, Jesus, I don't care what you're going through. If you'll cry out to Jesus, your valley can become a valley of hope. So I've looked at this scripture for 55 years, I guess. But I saw something I'd never saw. Jesus stopped and they brought him to the Lord. And right there, he gave that man a blank check. Could you imagine if the richest man in town gave you a blank check and signed his name? That's what Jesus did. He gave him a blank check. He said, what? What do you want? What will you have me do? The sky's the limit. No limitation. What will you have me do? And that man's valley of despair became his valley of hope. Jesus healed him. And I want to tell you today, Jesus is still in the healing business. I said he's still in the healing business. Whatever valley you're walking through today, it can become your valley of hope. Would you come this morning? And there is victory in this trial. 